Good evening all and welcome. Tonight we're going to be heading camping, so join me as we get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I was nine when this happened. My sister, my dad, my stepmom and I were at a place called Palmetto Island. It was a camping resort where you just pull up with a tent or camper and stay there for a weekend or so. We were in a camper. I should set the scene for you though. Palmetto Island wasn't really an island in the traditional sense. It was completely surrounded by palm trees and vegetation except for the road in and out. There were roads in the resort, but they were only for golf carts and other small vehicles. The whole place was also dense with palm trees and vegetation. If you weren't on the road, in a campsite, or at one of the recreational areas, you would be in a forest. We, as in my family, were all hanging out at one of the playgrounds. I had made a new friend who I was playing with. At some point the rest of my family had left me to play with my new friend, until eventually he left too. I was there alone, and the sun began to set. This wasn't the first time we'd been to Palmetto Island, and I had at the time known it pretty well. I had assumed that the walk back to our campground would be short, however at some point I got turned around, and ended up in the area where you would launch boats into the water to go fishing. There was a group of people there, and I asked them for directions. Now I wasn't completely brain dead, so I lied and said the number of our campsite was 10 sites down from our actual one. They pointed me in the right direction, and I began to walk. Now I hadn't known this at the time, but my family had realised I was no longer at the playground and started driving around in our golf cart, and another one they had rented. If they hadn't, I probably wouldn't be telling this story. As I'm walking towards our campsite, a car pulls up beside me, and one of the people I had asked for directions rolls down the window. Keep in mind I had been walking for about an hour or two in total. He offers me a ride, and tells me to ride in the front seat. Me, tired and wary from walking, accepts and gets into the car. I now know that this is something you should never do. We're driving in the right direction, until he passes up the entrance to the campsites at which point I knew something was wrong. I tell him he passed it up, but he doesn't reply. By some stroke of divine luck I see my dad in a golf car driving in the opposite direction at us, and I start yelling and waving at him. He pulls up in front of the car and stops, and so does the guy driving. I use the manual unlock in the car door, and run to my dad, who has his concealed carry drawn on the guy as soon as I'm out of the way. He calls the police, and holds the guy at gunpoint until they get there and arrest him. I'm only telling this story now, because I found out last week that the guy and his whole family had done this before, and they had gotten away with it. I try not to think about what would have happened to me had my dad not showed up when he did. I'm about to share with you the single most terrifying moment of my life. I have a cousin, that lives in a secluded area where everyone owns land. He has something like 600 acres of land where he lets his cattle run free. And I went to visit him one summer, and he came up with the idea of camping out. He has a little spot where there is a teepee and a clearing underneath a few large trees. The walking path goes straight through the clearing down a little trail to a pond that then goes back to some trees. To get to this place, we drove his truck through his pasture and up to a tree line. We had to get out and walk a ways into the trees to get there. Thinking back on it, I can't really remember how far into the tree line his camping site was, but it was a little bit of a walk. So my cousin, his girlfriend and a friend she brought and myself start to drink and had a small campfire going. Someone threw a little too much brush on the fire and it got pretty big to the point that it lit some of the branches of the trees above on fire. At that moment it was kind of scary, thinking that we had almost started a huge fire, but it grew and died pretty quickly. Now later on in the night we were all drinking, and I am tending to the fire. The girlfriend says out loud that she needs to use the restroom, 
and I thought that she went down to the path near the pond. The fire is starting to die down, and I need to gather some more brush, so I start walking towards the path to the pond. As I'm walking down the path, I see a shadow of someone holding a tree branch up, seemingly looking back at me. Remembering that the girlfriend has announced she needs to use the restroom, I assume it's her, so I call out her name. As soon as I do, the shadow drops the branch and I can no longer see it. At that same moment, I hear my girlfriend shout back at me from the campsite. I look back, and from a distance I could see her coming out of the teepee. I look back at the brush and see nothing. I stare for a moment, but there was no movement. Completely shocked and confused, I start to walk back to the camp, heart already racing so fast I thought I may pass out. When I walk up to the camp, I see that all of us are there. I tell him what just happened and everyone is a little spooked. My cousin brushes it off, saying that we were out on his land and there's no way anyone could be here. We eventually kept drinking, but I can't forget about it. Much later on, I'm getting a little tired, and my cousin is just looking to fool around with his girlfriend, so we all lay down in the teepee. I'm laying next to the friend, just trying to pass out, while I can hear them fooling around. They are all talking and whispering when I hear the running thud of footsteps outside of the tent, as if something is running at the tent, then kind of hear a pop and drag, like someone hit the tent and drug against it. My cousin leaps out yelling, and now we're all terrified. He's shouting that we need to get out of there now, and we all left everything and ran to his truck. We drove back to his house, scared crapless, talking about what just happened and what we saw earlier. As we were all talking about it, we all agreed that the thud sounded like it had two feet, and you could hear a difference in deers or horses galloping. They were big thuds as if carrying a lot of weight. My cousin said he was laying near the edge of the teepee when he heard the steps and looked up to see something hit and drag something across the fabric right in front of him. The fact that he was actually scared is what made it even more frightening, as he had lived on that land his whole life and had been to that campsite so many times. It was early spring of 2016. I had just turned 24 years old. My friend and I just reached our main spot to camp, Black Canyon Rim Campgrounds, just outside of Payson, Arizona. We'd usually travel out here two or three times each year. It has some incredible views and is only a couple of hours away from the city. For the most part, this area was pretty secluded. A privately owned convenience store rested a few miles away with a small town 20 miles before that. The entrance was on a dirt road directly off the highway, with a campground sign at the start of the road, marking local wildlife, any fire hazards, and general news relevant to camping folk. The path is mostly linear, with maybe one fork spanning several miles. We once traveled down the dirt road to see how far it would take us. One of the paths would take you to another highway entrance, with a ranger's tower halfway there. The other path led to a dead end. An abandoned cabin can be found on this path a few miles in, mostly hidden off in the distance behind some larger foliage. The snow had mostly cleared up at this point, leaving for crisp air, a slight chill, and fauna becoming active again. We'd usually spot some wild horses, several deer, and tons of little critters whenever we'd come out this way. It really was the perfect time of year for a relaxing trip to get away from the city for a few days. We got in at around 4 p.m. on a Tuesday. It was late for us, and we'd usually try to make it out of there by noon at latest. This trip was pretty spontaneous. We both had work during the coming weekend and decided to just go for it. The sun was setting fast, and we still hadn't picked our camping spot. There were maybe two other groups, both families parked somewhat close to the entrance, only a few hundred yards away from the highway. This time around, we just wanted to get away from the humans for a while. Customer service jobs will do that to you. 
we drove down the dirt road, past our usual spot, and finally picked the perfect area. A small clearing just hanging off the edge of a hill. The whole valley could be seen from this area, with a beautiful sunset. This would have been our main spot from then on, if the next night's incident never occurred, that is. We agreed to get a campfire going, and we would just avoid building a tent on this trip. We didn't have much time to do so anyway, and her car wasn't that uncomfortable. I'd sleep in the back seat, and she'd take the passenger seat with the window slightly ajar. We'd have a few blankets for each of us, and would fall into that unrivaled slumber. The next day went fairly uneventful. We just decompressed, and I had this strange feeling throughout the day, like we were being watched. There were crunching of leaves, just out of sight every few hours, but I figured it was just the local wildlife doing their thing. My friend didn't notice anything unusual, so I didn't dwell on it. Night came, and the feeling still hadn't gone away. My friend must have felt something she didn't vocalize though, as she took some of her sleeping pills. She didn't usually need to take them on our camping trips. The nature's ambience was enough to put anyone to sleep, I thought. It was nearing 1am. My friend dozed off in the passenger seat while I attempted to wind down in the back. I leaned against the side window behind the passenger seat, legs outstretched to the car's back door. The window opposite of me was rolled down slightly, with a cold breeze flowing in. I had been on my phone scrolling through Facebook when I heard something outside. A few crunches of the fallen leaves, several paces outside the car. I whispered to my friend, Did you hear that? But she was already out. I put my phone down and listened intently for a minute or two, but then heard nothing. Ha! Huh. Must have been a small animal curious about the camp. I retreated back to my phone, scrolling through social media. About ten minutes had passed when I heard it again, that definitive crunch right outside the door. I lowered the phone. My eyes took a moment to adjust from the light of the phone into the deep darkness of the wood, and as I turned the phone away from me, the backlight illuminated the window above my feet. To this day, I can't get the image out of my head. Two dirty, scabbed hands held onto the window, the fingers wrapped inside the car. The nails were long, unkept, and dark. Behind the window, a silhouette of a face was pressed up against it. The breath would create condensation every few seconds, and all I could make out were the reflections of those empty, black eyes. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. It felt like eternity. The staring contest between this thing and me. Thoughts were repeating incessantly in my head. Why haven't they ran if they noticed I saw them? What were they planning? Is this the face of death? After probably ten seconds of not doing anything, the hands slowly unclenched the window and receded into the darkness. The condensation on the window dispersed, and another few seconds passed before I heard the dreaded crunch, crunch, melodically fading into the distance. I still just sat there. What on earth had just happened? Why didn't I do anything? Why am I still not doing anything? With that thought, my body shot into adrenaline. I pounded on my friend's seat, waking her up from her slumber in a dizzy confusion. I unlatched and kicked open the back door and took a moment to scan the area. Whoever they were, whatever it was, it was gone. I scrambled to pick up any important camping supplies we left outside and cramped everything into the back seat and trunk. Periodically, looking over my shoulder and listening for those two footsteps. I slammed the back door shut, and there they were, a grim reminder of the horror that had just happened. Two handprints, imprinted on the window. I quickly wiped them off the window in a panic, 
a reaction to erase the events, I guess. I jumped into the front seat, started the car, and floored it out of there. My friend, finally coming to, asked me what the hell I'm doing. I just screamed, we gotta go, there's someone out there. I didn't see whoever or whatever it was fleeing the scene, speeding down the dirt road. My friend insisted I slow down, and eventually I did. We reached the highway, and I proceeded to drive 20 or so miles before we reached a Denny's, where my friend asked for us to stop and eat to explain everything. The nightmare subsided a few months later. My embarrassment continues to this day, for the state of shock I was in at the time. Everyone says you have a fight or flight instinct, and I'm confused whether I have either. I mean, it just sat there and did nothing. I frequently tend to ask myself who was out there. Another camper messing with us? A resident of the abandoned cabin down the dirt road? Or maybe something more paranormal residing in the forest watching lone, vulnerable campers as they drift off to dreamland? We'd still go camping there in the years ahead, but never too far from the highway. Whatever it was, I hope I've seen the last of it. I spent my life in Georgia, and love hiking all over, but I must admit, North Carolina has the best mountains. For this reason, I frequently drive up there and hike and camp. This time, I went up with my family in an RV, and stayed with them in Maggie Valley. The next day, however, I had them drop me off about 10 miles away at the cold mountain trailhead, and I planned to hike up, spend the night, and be back down in the morning. I was by no means inexperienced at hiking or camping, but I have never camped alone. On top of that, I didn't bring a pistol, something I won't go without now. On the way up, the trail was surprisingly strenuous, not necessarily steep. I've hiked some steep stuff out west, but more like tons of up and downs, and feeling like it would never end. Eventually it began to get darker, and I realized we needed to stop and set up while I still had light. So I stopped about half a mile short to the summit, and figured I would continue in the morning. Nothing eventful happened. I set up camp in a really good spot, ate my food, and went into the tent. At this point I realized I hadn't run into a single other person my entire way up. This wasn't eerie at the time, but soon would be. I have trouble sleeping, and usually lay awake for up to an hour trying to sleep. During this, I thought I heard someone lightly walking around the general area, because of the rhythm of the steps. I brushed it off as my mind running wild, but I did pull my big old knife out of my bag and put it next to me in the sleeping bag. That morning, I woke up and ate oatmeal. As I ate, I looked over at my tent and noticed a strange bundle of dried twigs and berries tied with a green cord propped against my tent. Internally, I was pissing myself, but I packed my stuff up and took off within five minutes. There was no way I was going to be bothered to go up to the summit now and headed straight down. On my way down, I realized there was a pretty heavy fog and ended up on a side trail that eventually ended, and I was lost. I used a compass to eventually reorient myself, and found the trail again, one of the biggest reliefs I had, and made it out with no incident. However, I come to find out that that same morning, a 27-year-old died on the same section of trail as me, and it's possible I would have run into him had I not gotten lost and rejoined the trail later. His family seems to have scrubbed the internet of several of the articles on him, but the scariest part was knowing that someone knew where I was and watched me, and I had no clue about them. I've been backpacking and camping, mostly solo as an adult, for the majority of my life. I'm cautious about my surroundings, and I listen carefully when I'm out. I try to remain an observer, and move through the land with little impact. I'm also very interested in the mysterious and the obscure, cryptids and the unexplained. 
reading all of the 411 cases as well. A few years ago, I set out to camp near an old growth forest in North Georgia. Most old growth here is gone, but there are places that haven't been logged yet, and if you get the chance to visit one wherever you may live, I'd suggest it. It's beautiful, serene, and alive in a way that's hard to describe. This particular forest was one of hemlock and poplar, and the trees were massive. I had a guidebook that gave directions out into the sticks, following little country roads that eventually turned into gravel. After a long drive into a national forest, I parked near the trail, which was unmaintained, meaning it wasn't very popular or highly traveled. I hiked out through the woods to where the trail eventually just kind of stopped. There was very little undergrowth, and I spent the afternoon just exploring, looking at the trees and enjoying the calm. I eventually made my way down to a creek and crossed over it to an old field that formed a sort of bowl in the land with hills and ridges on all sides. The fact that there was a field means that there had, I guess at some point, been people living in the area, but I saw nothing of the sort when I was there, and my map showed that I should be far from any roads or settlements. I set up my tent and made some food. It was late when I decided to have a little smoke, and lay out in the field in front of my tent, and look at the stars before bed. There was little to no light pollution, and I always relished the opportunity to enjoy the sky at times like those. As I was laying there, I began hearing a loud knocking sound from up near the ridge where I'd been earlier in the day, maybe a thousand yards away. Three knocks, and a long pause followed by three more, and then it would repeat. When I say knocks, what I mean is very loud noises like two logs or trees being hit together, loud enough to reverberate in the little bowl I was in, loud enough that you could almost feel it. I could pinpoint where the sound was coming from, but it was night in the forest, and anyone who's been out there knows that it's dark. I thought that it had to be a person making that sound, because what else could make such a rhythmic sound? It was extremely loud, and would have taken considerable effort to produce. I had seen no one else at all during the day, and the direction from which the sound came was the section of old growth I'd explored earlier. And that's it. Eventually the sound stopped, and I went to bed feeling like I heard something I wasn't meant to hear. Or maybe I'd heard something specifically meant for me, and me alone. I packed up, and hiked out the next day. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't hyper-aware and waiting for something else to happen, but it never did. I've told friends about this, and they'll either say it was for sure a Sasquatch, or that I was for sure close to someone's house that I didn't know about. Why would a person be out in the woods late at night, banging logs together in the dark? My friend and I were hiking in Blue Ridge, Georgia, we were just going camping for one day, and the trail was part of the Appalachian Trail, near the very start of it. My friend told me a story about one of his friends, and said that he heard voices and footsteps at night near Blood Mountain, and he had to night hike because the noises were so intense. So back to the main story. We found a campsite and set up shop. As it got darker, we got a bad feeling, like something was watching us. Then it started. We saw a pair of red glowing eyes about 100 to 150 feet away from our fire. Then my friend goes to dunk his head into the creek near our tent and claims something pushed him into the water. His shirt was soaked and he hid his nose on a rock and was bleeding. Then, after that, we heard a woman's voice but couldn't make out her words. It was from in front of us behind us and to the left of us over the creek. It could have been a night hiker, but to the left there was no trail, and the night hikers weren't using a flashlight if they were. We also heard footsteps around us and sticks snapping. We finally just got into the tent and tried to sleep. My friend fell asleep before me, 
and I heard twigs snapping right next to my head outside the tent. And that's pretty much it. It's very creepy. If you decide to go camping in Blue Ridge, just know there are things out there lurking at night. I had just moved to the US for law school. Anne had made a few friends who were also from Spain like I was. Charlotte, Anne, and Lisa. We were having a really good time in the US, and in September of 2023, we decided that we would do a bit of exploration, and opted to go on a road trip to Canada, drive around Lake Ontario, and drive back to New York City through upstate New York. I am a guy and everything went super smoothly until our last night there. For our last night, we had rented an off-grid cabin in a remote area in the woods in upstate New York. To give some locals an idea, we were about a half hour away from Harrisburg. Lisa and I had decided to spend one night in this cabin to be at one with nature. It was super old, made from logwood, and there was no running water nor electricity. Both Lisa and I had experience with survival in the wild in Europe. I myself had been a boy scout for my whole life, and was even a scout leader for a while. Our other two friends were, as much as I loved them, purebred city girls. They had pretty much zero experience with camping, or to just be in a place where there was no phone signal, as was the case with this cabin. We had been driving all day to get there, and when we reached the beginning of the forest, it was already past 10 p.m., and it was really dark that night. While driving to this place, we lost connection with the GPS, and I had to drive to the cabin on intuition, paired with a good old-fashioned map, hoping for the best while trying to drive safely on these muddy trails. On the way there, Anne and Charlotte were in the back of the car, and the moment they lost their phone service, they were very uneasy for the rest of the ride. All of a sudden, in the pitch black darkness of the forest, we all saw a campfire, but there were no houses around or people, just a campfire, well organized since the fire was not spreading and it was not as big as a bonfire. It kind of startled us as we were quite remote. It was also getting quite late. When this happened, we reached the end of the trail and figured we had taken the wrong trail at a crossroad before. So I turned around, and we were on our way again. Half hour later, and a couple of wrong trails later too, we finally arrived to our destination, as we could finally see the first glimpse of this godforsaken cabin in the middle of nowhere. To give you an idea of how old it was, the toilet was made from wood, and this was outside the cabin. When we arrived, it was still raining, and both Anne and Lisa were definitely not in the mood for getting out of the car and going into a cabin with zero light. So Lisa and I left the lights of the car on and went inside the cabin while using our phone flashlights to check the cabin out and see if we could find any old flashlights, which we did. And to see if we could turn on the fireplace, which we couldn't, as all the wood was still wet from the rain and it seemed no one had prepared any dry wood anywhere. So, with a couple of old flashlights and a small, improvised fire that I managed to make in the stove, we all got in the cabin, and I started to make some pasta for us. Meanwhile, the girls were preparing the beds and closing the windows since it was already cold. The cabin had a small ladder, which led to an elevated room slash space with a bed where all three of the girls would fit and I would sleep downstairs in a bunk bed that was probably here since before the First World War. While making pasta, Anna came up to me, knowing that both Lisa and Charlotte did not like to hear anything scary at night, and told me that she had seen an old cemetery in the middle of the forest on the way to our cabin, and that she had also seen a figure walking around there. I first laughed it off as nothing. I do not consider myself a big believer in scary stuff, being from Spain, we take promises very seriously, and to swear to God is a very serious oath for us, and she swore to God that she wasn't lying. I told her then that I believed her, but there was no need to panic, as I would lock all the doors when we went to sleep. 
We had some pasta, some s'mores, and each had a beer. Then I decided to have one or two more. The girls were getting kind of tired, so they went up to bed. And I, with my last beer, decided to just sit outside and watch the rain, as I do deeply enjoy listening to it. So I sat myself down with my beer, and the lovely sight of not seeing a single light in the distance. I could greatly appreciate this coming from New York City, and I just scanned the area around with my flashlight. There was nothing much really to see beside a lot of trees and a small creek a little further away. All I could hear was the wind, the rain, and the running water down the creek. That was until I suddenly heard what I would describe as a weird roar. The first thing that came to my mind was a bear, but I had researched well before our trip and knew that bears were very uncommon in this part of the state. I also knew that a bear roar would not sound like this, except for the fact that it was quite deep. I was startled, but not very scared. I continued to scan the rest of the forest as far as I could see from the porch. It was then, at that moment, that I caught a glimpse of a figure. It was hidden deep within the tree line. I was looking at it. It was at least six foot four, and it was hidden well with brown fur blended in with the trees in autumn. And I saw two eyes glinting from the reflection of my flashlight. I wasn't entirely sure what it was at this distance, but it was not a bear. It was bipedal and had rather long arms. We looked at each other for probably no more than five seconds, but it felt like an eternity when it vanished behind a tree and I heard another roar. It was then that I got goosebumps and all the hair stood up on my body. I was very scared. That was the catalyst for me to go inside as quickly as I could, lock all the doors and close every curtain. I quickly went to bed and told myself that surely it was just my exhausted mind. And after an hour or so, I calmed down and finally fell asleep. The rest of the night was uneventful and the next morning when I went to relieve myself after having drunk beer the night before, the weather cleared and it was rather sunny, and as far as I could see, the forest was calm and beautiful, with no sight of any animal or anything abnormal. We had a nice breakfast that morning and left for our way back to the city that never sleeps. And so ends the story of that night. I never talked about what I saw that night because I know all three girls would not want to hear it and I figured after these months that it was best to share it here. If anyone has any idea what it could have been, feel free to enlighten me, especially if it's backed up with rational reasoning. I went camping one summer with my parents, younger sister, and my friend. My friend and I were around 15 to 16 years old at the time. At the campground, my parents and sister stayed in a camper we owned while my friend and I took a tent. We were still in the same lot. One night, it must have been close to midnight, and I was sitting in the tent with our flashlights on. The campground was completely silent, and it seemed as if everyone else around us must be asleep. When out of nowhere, my friend and I hear this kid yelling for help. It kept getting louder and louder, until we could hear him running. We were trying to turn off our flashlights when we saw the shadow of this person's feet running past our tent. We turned off the lights and sat in complete silence, terrified as it sounded like another set of feet were running behind him as well. We waited for a while. When I peeked my head out of the tent finally, we saw nothing, heard nothing more, and we couldn't believe no one else was peeking outside or looking around with us. We were terrified, but ultimately made a run for it to the camper, and they all insisted they heard nothing, which made no sense to us because the screaming for help was so loud and directly next to us. To this day, my friend and I feel crazy because we know what we heard, and yet it seems no one else heard or saw this despite my family and so many other strangers being in close proximity. 
This happened in around 2007, and it still leaves me perplexed and freaked out. My family lives at the bottom of a mountain and owns 25 acres. Five are cleared and the rest is woodland. I have the back of an old decommissioned ambulance that we set up not far from the trailer so that I can run electricity and internet to it. Now, this is when I first started sleeping out in it and a friend and I had done so at the time. Both of us were 16 and having a sleepover inside it. Unsure what time it was, but it was still pitch black outside when all I heard was a deep voice, far too deep for either of us say, hey, hey, a few times. The first one sounded like it was outside, but the second one sounded as if it was inside with us. I rolled over and saw the friend fast asleep, eyes fully closed. I honestly thought I was dreaming because I was half awake. Nope. I mentioned it to my friend, and he said that they had heard it too, but just at a different time of night. And when they'd looked at me, I was out cold, eyes fully closed. Would it be a crackhead uttering nonsense through the windows that have screens on them, which we had slightly opened because of the summer nights? Or perhaps a person who died in the ambulance, but whose spirit hasn't moved on yet. I'm unsure, but it certainly left me with a lingering sense of dread. This is a story of a close friends. They were camping as a family, mom, dad, and two small girls in Washington State. They hiked up into the mountains for 10 miles before setting up camp. Everything was great until about an hour after dark when they heard footsteps coming up the trail. No lights, just walking steps. The footsteps stopped outside their tent. My friend's spouse unzipped the tent to see who it was. There was a nearly naked man with wild hair and a huge beard standing outside staring back at him. Zip in the stats? Is the only thing he said to them when they asked him anything. My friend started freaking out. Why is a nearly naked man trying to get them to zip stats? What stats exactly? How does one zip a stat? It was too far to hike back to the car in the dark. So they zipped up the tent and basically stayed awake all night while the man sat near their fire pit. At first light they repacked and hiked back to their car. The man followed them most of the way. They didn't see him do any drugs and he had nowhere to keep his stash since he only had on a fancy loincloth. About halfway to the car he vanished behind them on the trail. They hoped they could put the incident in the past and forget about it and they almost could until they got to their car and saw that someone had written in soap slash chalk zip the stats on every window of their car. This all started when I was around 12. My sister, father and stepmother at the time, and her two daughters, were camping. We had only been there for a day and everything was fine. Then me and my sisters decided we were going to go to the stream by ourselves. My father gave us a walkie-talkie so that we could keep in contact while we were gone. Now the place we were going to was surrounded by bush and to get there you had to go down a little path through it. We spent a while with our shoes off and splashing in the water when Jade said she could see someone standing among the trees. We all looked and saw a figure. It was dark, but you could tell it was in the shape of a man, but you couldn't see the face. We stared at it for a few seconds before it disappeared. We forgot about it and kept playing in the water, but I felt a little uneasy. A while later, we all looked back, wanting to know if he was still there. And he was. Everything was silent. I could hardly hear the rapids in the little stream. We stopped looking. After about 20 minutes, we headed back to the campsite. My sister lingered behind and I was about 20 meters ahead of them, but we couldn't see each other. I heard a twig snap behind me and I turned to look 
assuming they had caught up to me. Nope. I turned to see the tall, dark figure literally a foot behind me, so I started running. The whole time I could feel him close behind, and I ran as fast as I could until I was out of the open campground. He was gone. My sisters came out not long after, and I told them what happened. I asked, but none of them had seen him behind me. They were too far behind, and the path was windy, so they were around a corner from me most of the time. Throughout our camping trip, we didn't see him around as much, but occasionally would see him just standing there. Fast forward a few years and we go back, with my father's new girlfriend and her daughter Stella. I can't recall this trip as much, but I know for a fact Stella saw him too. Three years ago I started seeing him at my house, just anywhere and everywhere really. One day I was out in the backyard and I started to lean down to pat my cat when in my peripheral vision I saw him right behind me. I looked at my cats to block him out, and as I do, I feel a hand grab my hair and tug. I immediately spun around. I now live with my boyfriend and can't say for certain if I've seen him again, but sometimes I see shadows move behind me in the reflection of the TV, and when I look, there's nothing there. I try and chalk it up to being a trick of the light, but I did hear something recently. My boyfriend's alarm went off for work, waking me up too. He switched it off but laid in bed a bit longer. I was awake then, facing my boyfriend's back. One eye closed as it was smushed against the pillow. And suddenly, I kid you not, I hear someone whisper my name in my ear. It was so clear, and I could even feel a cold breath on me. I sat up and said to my boyfriend, did you say my name? He looked confused. He was just sitting there playing on his phone. No, he hadn't. I believed it was a female voice. I'm not sure if this relates to my experience, but I'll add it here anyway, as I'm dying for an explanation. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's collection of camping stories. If of course you did, I would appreciate knowing about it down below. A huge thanks as always to my members and patrons whose names can be seen on screen, and if you'd like to sign up and get a few more perks, you can check out the links in the description. But for now, it's time to say goodnight. Stay awesome, and for more content, see the links on screen.